Well, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Vincent. I'm an Outdoor Reach Field instructor, former Outdoor Reach participant, and leadership program graduate. And in this time of uncertainty, we're working to stay connected with our Outdoor Reach community, our program participants, uh, in order to bring update information on responsible ways to recreate outdoors during the outbreak. Our goal is to promote active living, mental health, and well being during this COVID 19 outbreak. And we want to make sure we're getting outside in a responsible way during this COVID-19 outbreak. So make sure to refer to web, our website uh, for the latest park and outdoor spaces closure resources. And I'll link out uh, to that after this live stream. So some recent updates. Um, hopefully we're practicing social distancing by staying at home, except for essential outdoor activities, uh, including getting fresh air and uh, exercise. So while we're staying um, close to home and inside, San Diego County has asked us to reflect on why we stay at home. So in my case, I stay at home to keep my cats safe. Why do you stay at home? And so to wrap up the week, we're gonna wrap it up with Field Friday. Um, today, we're highlighting ways to stay engaged, um, stay engaged in activities outdoors in your community and your household. Our question today is, how do pets and animals play a role in your life during this time? So to share in this discussion, I'd like to welcome our guests joining our live stream, Lexis and Ben. You. Yeah. Hey, Benny. So to answer Benny's question, um, well, before that, let me start off by saying hi. My name is Lexis. Um, I'm a youth programs assistant coordinator at Outdoor Outreach and a field instructor with them. I, like Vinny, was a participant. I've been with them for about seven years. I was in their youth leadership program. I went off to college and then I came back and I became an intern for them. And this year I started as a field instructor and as the youth program's assistant coordinator. What about you, Ben? Thanks, Lexis. Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Ben. Uh, I've been with Outdoor Outreach since 2014, uh, working predominantly with logistics uh, and soon graduating to a senior trip instructor. I had an opportunity to really connect with a lot of folks out in the outdoors for first time experiences or returning experiences. It's one of the main motivations that keeps me coming back. I'm, I'm excited to be here with you all and still connecting even in this virtual space. I'm gonna turn it back over to Lexis to share a little bit more uh, about how we can recreate during these uncertain times. Lexis? Thanks. So not necessarily recreation, but with animals, um, they, pay, they play a very important role in my life. If this little one will unwrap herself from the cords, I have a ball python. Her name is London. She's about seven months old. And she's a very curious little thing. Here, I'll show her to you. She's pretty tiny. Well, right now she gets up to about five feet. But she, and then I have another animal. Her name is London. Me, her name is Tokyo. Ironic, you know, they're both named after cities. But she's a bearded dragon. She was currently, she was in the window. Uh, she loves to go outside and she loves to see the outdoors. And so for their health, um, I usually take them outdoors and let them bask in the sun and kind of get some mental stimulation, seeing new things and seeing new plants and hearing new birds. And it also gives me a chance to take a deep breath and enjoy the fresh air. We have a really lovely garden right outside our house. And so it allows me to see the trees and feel like I'm really in the outdoors without having to go to the outdoors and potentially harming someone without, because I'm not doing social distancing. So yeah, they make up a good portion of my day and they also keep me very busy, you know, feeding them and making sure they're all right and making sure that, you know, they're healthy. And so it takes my mind off of the things that are happening right now. What about you, Ben? Thanks, Lexis. Well, I have with me today uh, one of my two pugs. This is Milo. She's a, a rescue pug um, that we got uh, about seven, eight years ago. She's actually about 12 years old, but this little cuddler loves to remind me 
One of the importance of having uh, some positive support from uh, cuddly ones like this. In addition, she reminds me to take her out at least four to five times a day, which is definitely a great chance for me to get outside and to at least breathe in some fresh air. In addition to that, she's always the one that's willing to cozy up next to you just to check on in and make sure you're doing all right. Really uh, allows me to recognize what things I can be grateful for uh, during this time. And this cuddly number definitely does that. This is Milo, everybody. I'm gonna turn it over to Vinny to share some of uh, his pets as well, Vinny. Yeah, unfortunately, thanks for sharing, uh, Lexus and Ben. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring uh, my little critters here today, but um, I get a lot of love from my little sister's pug. I'm definitely a pug person now. Uh, his name is Stouffer, and I think he's about two and a half, three years old. So uh, I, I bet they would have a, a heyday together. <laughs> and I also have two cats at home, two tabby cats. Never thought I'd be a cat person, but now I have two. So <laughs> they're awesome. And like you said, Ben, Kind of remind you to slow down and um you know just enjoy the, the the smaller things the finer things in life you know and it's uh it's good to have a little little furry friend around or scaly friend and like lexus <laughs> and i'll turn it back over to you guys excellent thanks Vinny. thanks lexus uh, now you've had a chance to see some of our furry and scaly friends that are keeping us company throughout these times while having pets in our homes is a, is a great reward uh, for those that do, there are some folks that may not have an opportunity to have pets. Uh, and there are some other great options that we wanna share with you about the different wildlife that we he have here uh, in the San Diego region. And we wanna share a couple of those common species that you can appreciate from the comforts of your backyard or front yards. Um, and to demonstrate that for you, I want to share with you a couple of different variety of birds that we could see flocking our backyards. There are a couple that are most frequent in the San Diego region. We'd love to hear in the comments if you can spot any of these uh, on your next adventure outdoors. Uh, which one is your favorite or if you have some others that you would be interested in sharing with us. Today we're going to talk about the morning dove. You might hear this cooing, hooting uh, sound in the background like a small little owl that you can witness in the early dawn hours of the morning. In addition, we also have hummingbirds that frequent our plants around us. The most common is the Anna's hummingbird, most common to the San Diego region and can be spotted by their green bodies and either a pink or gray heads. I'm going to turn it over to Lexis, who's going to share a little bit more about some scaly friends that we can see in the outdoors. Lexis? Thanks, Ben. Um, really nice to hear about the birds that we can find in our neighborhood. So for me, I love reptiles. And so two of the reptiles that you can find around your neighborhood, one of them is the southern alligator lizard. And though it may look big and it may look a little bit intimidating, they're actually pretty small. They only get about three to seven inches. And they actually make very great pets because they're really, really docile and if you handle them frequently. That doesn't mean go outside and find a, a southern alligator lizard and pick it up and take it home. Um, be responsible, do the leave no trace, look but don't touch. Um, and make sure that it's staying where it needs to because it needs to be a part of that population and it needs to be there so someone else can go out and see them. And so these lizards can be found near human habitation. So you might get a chance to see them quite often if you're outside. And they're often foraging or in the mornings and the evenings. Um, and they're usually like raccoons found in garbages. Another one is the Western fence lizard. And like their name, um, they can be seen basking and sunning themselves on fence posts. Um, they can be seen on rocks and on paths. Um, like my bearded dragon here, they love to sun themselves on rocks um, and take in the UVBs from the sun because it gets them very healthy. But it also makes them pretty easy prey for birds and mammals alike. One of the mammals that like to prey on them is a shrew, which is a, mou a mouse-like creature. Um, back to you. Uh, 
um, Vinny to talk to us a little bit more. Right on. Thanks for sharing, folks. Um, I also want to invite everybody at home that's watching uh, to chime in on critters that you see around, um, you know, your part of the woods, and as well as, you know, the critters at home that keep you company, whether they be furry, scaly, or whatever. So please let us know. Uh, I just want to read off some comments here on the Facebook. Uh, the pugs are getting a lot of love. <laughs> Milo is too cute, says Sunny. <laughs> Every, a lot of people are saying hello, Milo. That's awesome. We miss you too, Maggie. Right on. Yeah, hey, Lexus, you ever see those lizards doing the push ups on the rocks? Uh, it is hilarious. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, go outside and try and find one, or like you go on YouTube. It is the funniest thing. It always makes me laugh. Yeah, it's awesome. I think they're like asserting dominance, I guess, like being, being big lizard, big guys. I don't know. So um, it's different for all lizards. Ben says he, he wants to know how often lizards eat. And so it's a bit different for babies, um, like this bearded dragon here. She eats like five times a day. Um, I mean, it varies. So like about three to five times to help them grow. When she gets bigger, she only eats like twice a day, sometimes once a day. Um, different types of lizards just need different types of nutrients and different types of things. So a big thing for bearded dragons and a lot of other lizards that are diurnal, which means that they're awake during the day, is that um, they have to have sun. So UVB, so going outside is really important. For snakes, um, again, depending on the snake, it, um, it depends on how much they can eat. For London, my ball python, she eats once a week, and that's kind of the usual for most snakes because it takes them a bit of time to digest their food, so about seven to 10 days. Ooh. That's so cool. Thanks for uh, answering that question, and thanks, for Ben, for asking it. Um, I love beard dragons. I would love to have one. They're very cool. Anytime you want to see her, well, I'll show her on the video camera, but I'll bring her in once we get over this COVID situation. Sounds good. And those, those things get pretty big, right? They get about mm, like a foot, maybe a little bit bigger. So not very big. London, my snake, she'll get about five feet. So wow. yeah, that's big. But they're sweethearts. They love to cuddle. They love to like just burrow into yourselves and this little girl here, she loves watching YouTube with me. She'll like lay on my chest and watch TV with me. She has her own favorite shows and everything. A YouTube watching snake, huh? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, again, I'm gonna open it up to folks out there. Chime in if um, you know you have ways of just uh, connecting with the animals in your home or in your immediate area. You wanna hear about it. Ben, are there any other uh, critters, you know, around where you live that you see um, other than the ones we've, we've talked about today? Uh, I see a lot of furry friends out. So um, even though um, I'm sitting here with Milo, uh, a lot of our neighbors have dogs as well. So uh, I'm able to, when I do get outside, I get to say hello to a, a lot of other uh, dogs and Milo gets to say hi to her friends as well. So even though we are um, quarantined during this time, uh, we're still taking the opportunity to at least say hi to our folks and, and friends uh, as we're jumping outdoors, at least for a little bit of fresh air and some sunshine now that we have it. That's awesome. I hear um, adoption rates have gone through the roof now that people are home and for those folks who maybe never had a pet or really wanted one, I guess it's adoptions are up. So that's pretty cool. I, yep. I definitely want a dog, but I don't think, I don't think I could, could do it right now. I don't think my cats would like it either. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold off right now. I'm going to live yep. through your pugs and my sisters. <laughs> And, and I think that that's a great point that you bring up as well, uh, just about the, the rescues and the animal shelters that are out there. Uh, it, it's great that folks are able to uh, take pets in during this time, uh, but I also would 
like to send a message saying, uh, if you are taking the pets in, hopefully you can help support them even past COVID uh, and want to make sure that uh, folks know uh, they do need good homes. Uh, and it's, it's an important to make sure that they have a home uh, past this time as well. So. And don't forget point. that they also have reptiles too. So if you want a reptile, they also have reptiles. I've seen plenty of them, especially turtles. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, and thank you for adding that, Ben. That's good to keep in mind. Good to keep in mind. I'm going to read off our Facebook comments here. It's loading a little slow for me. So sorry, folks, if I haven't seen your comments or whatnot. Uh, someone says, Benny, get a dog, all caps. <laughs> I want one. I'm trying. <laughs> um, lots of bird action in my backyard. Yes, I love all the birders. I'm a, I'm a fellow birder. I love birds of prey, like the big birds. So every time I see a hawk, you know, like a mouse open, I'm, you know, staring almost into the sun to find it, you know, or whatever. But they really intrigue me. So I love. Love big birds. Yay, go Ben. Benny and Lexus, says Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. Annie has so many birds, she says, in her backyard that chirp all day. That's awesome. She sits outside to hear all the, all the hooting hollering. That's awesome. I love how many birders we have. <laughs> oh, Maggie's been hanging out with the roly polies in her, her backyard, or her patio. <laughs> That's cool. Well, right on. Do y'all have any other things to add or any other little tidbits or fun facts, nature nuggets before we close out? Just be sure to go outside and see those animals and post on Facebook or Instagram or something like that and let us know which ones that you see. I wanna keep an up-to-date you know, running tab of like all the animals that we're gonna to get to see. Thanks, Lexus. Yeah, um, uh, you know, be safe and uh, be cautious when going outdoors. But if you can, get some fresh air, get some exercise, uh, and enjoy the wildlife around you. So thanks everyone for tuning in today. I uh, had a blast. I love just seeing all the furry friends and scaly friends on here, and it's been awesome. Thank you, folks, for tuning in once again to our live stream, and we are going to wrap it up. Just by saying um, this Wednesday, we'll have another YouTube video posted um, and also Mindfulness Monday coming up. So please tune in. I'll be joining you for both. Just want to thank Lexus and thank you, Ben, uh, for joining us today. We appreciate it. And thanks again to all you folks at home. See you next time. Yeah.